Welcome, everyone. I just wanted to put a new topic into this series that I call Society and Theology, where I kind of com I compare, uh, you know, spirituality concepts with the way they're perceived in society. Now, the last one was more focused on Judaism. And this one is a little introduction to something that might be longer. So if, if you see something here or you, you have an issue with this topic that you don't think I'm bringing up, uh, don't worry, because it, it's kind of an open topic. I'm going to talk about it more. That one of the reasons I am starting to you know talk a little more about this area is because I don't want everything to be just within current events politics. I, I want to kind of expose people to uh, some observations I have about uh, you know general societal trends and and you know religion I think is part of it. I talk about music plenty, and that's not necessarily current events. And uh, you know, absolutely. Some of the people that I see on YouTube that talk, uh, you know, from time to time a lot about religion, such as Sticks, Hex and Hammer, uh, Dave Rubin, um, you know, Sam Harris, uh, Lionel Nation from time to time, uh, they, they all have their own view about spirituality. And I think that it's good to get like a nice uh, variety of perspectives on it just to see wh why people uh, express themselves in the way that they do. And uh, this one, now, I, I do a lot of content on the left. And, um, you know, maybe maybe one day we'll, we'll deal with the Christian right, for example, which there's, pl there's still plenty of issues with it. But the Christian left is a phenomenon that's been around for, believe it or not, a, a pretty long time. And people tend to believe that the American left is anti-religious or that people who have progressive and socialist views uh, are typically atheists or whatever. Now, there are a ton of people that are atheists and on that uh, side of the spectrum that, that do, you know, that, that they despise the role of, of uh, God in, in society or, or, or any sort of religion. But to say that the left inherently despises religiosity, I think, is very inaccurate because, yes, Marx, for example, called religion the opiate of the masses. And most of the hard left regimes of, of the 20th century, for example, especially China, uh, who, you know, they were probably the, you know, China was, was close to being the worst. Cambodia as well. They they believe that you know traditional beliefs were a corruption of the of, of basically the working class, and that they were an obstacle to them achieving uh, you know the whatever you call it the socialist paradise. But on the other hand, you can find plenty of people within, especially Christianity, but you know in other religions as well that look at their faith in a more uh, populist sort of way. They, they see their belief in God as something that can uh, liberate the poor and, and the, the lower classes from a reality that is uh, oppressive. And, and, and they see that as transcending the reality of, uh, of uh, you know, poverty and uh, and, and, you know, in their, their belief system, capitalism. Now, I want to distinguish the real theologians of the religious left from some of the charlatan uh, preachers who just simply belong to the left, okay? Because it's, it's unfair to, to, uh, and to lump the two together. And I'll explain very, very briefly. Uh, one of the most important trends in the religious left is what's called liberation theology. And we're not going to explain the whole thing today. I'm not gonna make this video very long because I'm, I'm trying to do a live stream tonight. I'm, trying, I'm not trying to make that live stream too long either. But liberation theology developed out of, believe it or not, the Catholic Church. And a lot of, a lot of people throughout uh, you know, the, the Western secular world who, who don't come from religious background, they, they look at the Catholic Church as kind of a, 
a backward, very traditional, closed and hierarchical organization, which, which yes, there's, there's plenty of examples of behavior within it that way. And, and you know, scandals that have to do with that. Uh, but there are, tr there are certainly circles within the church that reject that perspective of Catholicism as a religion. And, and uh, think about it, a lot of these people who become Catholic theologians spend some of their time in monasteries. I'm not sure how common monasteries are. There's actually, I believe there's a monastery like less than two blocks away from where I work, but it, it might just be some sort of, uh, you know, seminary that, that's not a monastery, but you get the point. So, so these people, they live more of a simple lifestyle. They commune with God, um, you know, in, in their way. It's not, it's not the way I believe in religion, obviously, because I'm not a Catholic, but they, they commune with God and they learn the religious texts uh, together. And, and, and really, they, they, they live the most simple form of existence. So it would stand to reason that some of these people could believe that materialism and, and greed are obstacles to reaching spiritual enlightenment. That, that, that in itself, uh, it's not a leftist idea, but you, could, you can have, um, you know, people who believe in, in social justice in, in, um, or in uh, equal distri distribution of wealth. So there's commonalities there, okay? And that's, that's a, it's just an interesting, um, you know, combination of the two. And I'm not, I'm not being judgmental here because I do believe that people can, believe, can have a religion that holds any of these principles to be, to be true because I believe in freedom of religion. Uh, sometimes I think it has tragic consequences. Okay, I think I think a lot of that type of communal living has tragic consequences. But uh, I, I think it's the price of believing in freedom of religion. So so um, you know, with, without without placing a judgment on that, even though you know I'm I I personally do not support leftism. But let let's let's read. A response from one of the most well-known liberation theologians. This is Leonardo Boff. I think he's from Brazil. He, he writes this response to the Pope's encyclical, the Magna Carta of Integral Ecology, cry of the earth, comma, cry of the poor. And he says, before making any comment, it is worth highlighting some peculiarities of the, of the Laudato Si encyclical of Pope Francis. Is the first time a pope has addressed the issue of ecology in the sense of an integral ecology as it goes beyond the environment in such a complete way. Big surprise, he elaborates the subject on the new ecological paradigm, which no official document of the UN has done so far. He bases his writing on the safest data from the life sciences on Earth. So, so this is already somebody, he's not, he's not relying strictly on uh, religious belief systems. He's relying to some degree on on, on uh, modern science or or, or uh, classical sciences. So this isn't a person who who's just relying on you know whatever legends are part of the church. He he reads the data affectionately. Now he's talking about the Pope affectionately with a sensitive or cordial intelligence as he discerns that behind them hides human tragedy and suffering and from Mother Earth as. The current situation is serious, but Pope Francis always finds reasons for hope and trusts that human beings can find viable solutions. He links to the popes who preceded him, John Paul II and Benedict XVI, quoting them frequently. And something absolutely new, the text is part of collegiality as it values the contributions of dozens of bishops' conferences around the world from the so he, he kind of goes into like a, you know, shout outs and whatever. He gathers the contributions of other thinkers as such as Catholics, Pierre Teilhard de Chardin, Romano Gardini, Dante Alighieri. That's only that's the only name I, I, I recognize here. The Argentinian maestro Juan Carlos Scannone, Protestant Paul Ricoeur, and the Sufi Muslim Ali al Khawas. The recipients are all of us human beings. We are all inhabitants of the same common home, commonly used term by the Pope, and suffer the same threats. Pope Francis does not write as a master of, or doctor of faith, but as a zealous pastor who cares for the common home, home of all beings, not just humans that in, 
have it it so so you see th this is this is somebody now let, let me go to this paragraph he says in this part there is a phrase which refers to the reflection made in latin america today we cannot ignore that a true ecological approach always becomes a social approach and should integrate justice and discussions on the environment to hear both the cry of the earth and cry of the poor. Then he adds, the cries of the earth join the cries of the abandoned of this world. This is quite consistent since the beginning he has said that we are the earth, very much in line with the great singer and poet, Argentine indigenous Atahualpa Yupanqui, Human beings are the earth walking, feeling, thinking, and loving. So, you know, I'm not going to read the whole thing because it, it is a bit long. But uh, you, you see a lot of the common themes here. First of all, that the earth is sort of this reality that we are a part of and, and that we cannot neglect it and ignore it. Uh, I don't I don't think that that's a belief that is common to all Catholics. So, so they're kind of they're kind of a faction of Catholicism that has more of a holistic approach to the world that, that's, that's not common to all Catholics. Um, you can also see here he has this characteristic of ecumenicalism, which is, I believe, what it's called, where, where you, you, you accept that people of other religions have valid contributions to the same point that you're trying to make. And, and, and there, there is a large belief in, in that approach within the Catholic Church. Now, I, I'm I might be interviewing somebody who does not believe in that, who believes, you know, we should that or or that Catholicism is is the only true religion. But yeah, ecumenicalism is is very strong within liberation theology. They don't necessarily say that you cannot achieve salvation, uh, or that they're not the same type of people who will who will condemn you for not being a believer in in Christ. So it's it's an interesting it's an interesting variation on Catholicism. And uh you know for a long time it was very popular in in parts of the US uh especially during the hippie era. You know you can see all sorts of of uh, people Father Michael Flager for example of Chicago is known to be a liberation the theologian. Uh, it, it's it's still very prominent in parts of Latin America. So, what 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 do I what do I talk about when I distinguish this from uh, leftist uh, preachers who are kind of charlatans? Because, because you know, yes, I don't believe in in liberation theology either of the Catholic Church or or whatever it is. But I think that it still provides a system of belief that. You know, it ties together God and, and and his role in the world and 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 what and his and his uh and and his will as regards people, as regards wealth, as regards uh, justice and everything. That that's that's what I I can I can still respect liberation theology for providing that. And and you know, within Judaism, there's there's a counterpart to liberation theology as well. I think within Liz, uh, Islam, there's something like that. Certainly within Buddhism. Um. But but what, what what do you call like a charlatan, somebody who's not worthy of this type of characterization? Well, well I think if if you look at some of the popular preachers of of our time, especially in the U.S., we have, for example, um, Jesse Jackson. I have here this sermon that he says. Um, you know this this was just a couple weeks ago, January twenty first. He says. And then he goes to Martin Luther King's church, uh, Ebenezer Baptist Church in Atlanta. And he says, is this a government shutdown or a shakedown? Um, and then he says, of all injustices, King described inequality in health care as the most shocking and inhumane, according to the church's release. Uh, I'd have to really take a look at that. Uh, Ebenezer's pastor, the Reverend Raphael Warnock, commented on the fight to pass legislation to help those affected by the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals program, or DACA, which grants two-year work, two work permits and de deportation deferrals to immigrants who were brought here as children. You have no right to celebrate the dream if you will not liberate the dreamers, Warnock said. 
uh, Jackson's sermon addressed the misplaced priorities and spiritual bankruptcy of those who managed to open the national treasury wide enough to pass a huge tax cut for the richest of the rich, but cannot keep the government open long enough to heal the sick. Feed the so, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to bring the whole video down by focusing on, on, you know, Jackson's sermon, Jesse, Jesse Jackson senior, but look, there, there's a difference between, uh, now I do believe, yeah, maybe, maybe there's a philosophy behind what Jesse Jackson says, but th this is basically a, um, philosophy or, 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 you know, it's a sermon that's centered around current events and, and yes, do current events factor into religion? Uh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. There, there's definitely things that, that, you know, that they should, uh, evoke reactions in your faith. And I, th I think it's okay for people to do that. But with Jesse Jackson, this is somebody he, he ran two times for president. Uh, he was the quote unquote spiritual advisor to President Bill Clinton uh, during the Monica Lewinsky scandal and then was discovered to be having an affair himself. And, you know, it's it's easy to judge people. But <laughs> it's easy to judge Jesse Jackson based on on his his track record on that. The, the, I mean, look, President Clinton. All of the all of the policies that Jackson condemns today under President Clinton, he was a tremendous cheerleader and he, he never really uh, found the courage to come in and speak out at Dr. King's church against some of the, the, the programs that were a problem at the time. Now, there were a lot of figures on the left, religious figures on the left that objected to, for example, the welfare reform of the 1990s, yes. So there, there were plenty of, of people on the left who had the courage to do that. Jesse Jackson and Al Sharpton, not so much because they, they're part of that whole machinery. And I, I'm just like part of this video, which does not encompass everything about uh, leftism and religion or, or, or social justice and religion. Uh, it it kind of just gives an introduction to it. And I'm, again, I am not telling people not to believe in these belief systems just because I don't. I, I'm, try, I'm just trying to open up a discussion. And, and you know, I, I'll, I'll give some criticism where I can. But th there's a, there's a me what Jesse Jackson and his ilk do is that they actually detract from that type of belief system, because uh, you know, in, it, instead they they institutionalize their own personalities. They they create organizations such as Rainbow Push, which is Jesse Jackson's, and um, the National Action Network, which is Sharpton's, and and their organization becomes their church. And why is that important? Because a church typically requires you know a board of people and, and and they do have to have some sort of oversight over the reverend uh and and a corp you know the a non-profit or organization such as rainbow push uh it is is to some extent more easy to manipulate than a church it's not like you can't manipulate a church but <laughs> there's a little more scrutiny towards it than there is towards um a nonprofit. Now, I guess you could say this is kind of a hybrid, and and you could probably there, there's probably an argument to be made that uh, there there is no distinction between the two. But in in the case of these activist uh, clergy, uh, yeah, yes, there, there's a difference because instead of having uh, regular religious activities and and having to now he doesn't have to play along with the facade of, 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 you know, giving homilies or whatever it is they do in churches, you know, talking about various verses in scripture. No, notice that in, in that text, in that text, uh, now it, it was an excerpt, maybe, maybe they missed something from his broader speech, but there was not a single verse of, of scripture cited by Jesse Jackson. It was all about, you know, you can't, you can't claim that you've had the dream if you're not looking out for the dreamers. That's not in scripture. I'm sorry. That's that's not a that, that's a rhetorical statement. It's not a religious statement. So the the religious left in our country does not actually cite any scripture as the basis for their uh, positions. 
okay, Ex except for people who perhaps uh, follow the line of, of Leonardo Boff. I, I think Chris Hedges, for example, those of you that are on the left, if, if you if you follow Chris Hedges, I, I think he is one of these, um, you know, far left uh, Christians who, who does use the Bible in order to interpret the world uh, in, in a social justice sort of way. So he's not a Jesse Jackson, but but, you know, you, you look at some of these speeches and some of the, the actions of Jackson and Sharpton and, and um, you know, there's a third guy who appears on MSNBC all the time. Uh, yeah, they're, uh, you know, they're being a clergyman is only a costume. It's 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 a role that they play. It's similar to, you know, how, how there's the undertaker on WWE. And I, plenty of you probably you're familiar with the wrestling uh, references from Lionel Nation or whatever. But yeah, yeah, it's Kabuki theater, basically. They they. Yes, they, they might have some religious training or something, or, or, or they may have read. I've read Al Sharpton's biography. He doesn't appear to have had very deep religious training. Uh, Jesse Jackson, even less. Uh, no. The religious left is not really represented by them. I, I think, though, that there are issues where the religious left misrepresents scripture. It misrepresents actual belief systems in in, in Christianity, but uh, no, I, I don't believe that you should be forced to believe in a single doctrine uh, of whatever religion you're in. I, I think it's it's better for you to be honest if you don't believe in something. If if, if you're one of these people who <laughs> tries to take the Bible and 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 basically uh, whittle out of it whatever makes your life more comfortable, no, no, I I, I do think that's kind of uh, ridiculous sometimes. You know, some of the people that tried to, uh, you know, argue that, you know, in reality, God loves everything or whatever, but you still call yourself a Christian. Uh, I think it's it's a little, you know, that that's that's a, to, to me, it just doesn't seem correct. But it's it's the same. Um, you know, you have the same rights to express yourself as I do. And uh, yeah, I think I think liberation theology and 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 uh, the religious left, yeah, yeah, there's a strong tradition of it, and it shouldn't be just laughed off. It it, it should be re regarded as you know just a different belief system that um, established itself long ago in America. Uh, the original progressive movement had a very large Christian uh, component to it, Protestant Christian too, not Catholic. So. You know, so so people don't say, well, it's it's those Catholic immigrants from Italy and whatever Poland. Um, no, it was it was uh, a lot of Lutheran and and uh, Presbyterian preachers, I believe, in in the Midwest. They started the you know very strongly advocating on behalf of their congregations against uh, you know against uh, unfair labor practices of the time. This was like the early 20th century. So yeah, the, the religious left is a thing. It's not bullshit. Uh, it's it's kind of just ignored because people believe that leftism equals atheism. No, that's it's not that's not the case. Uh, both sides of the political spectrum have a relationship with uh, religion and with spirituality and with God. And um, you know that it's it's just it's it's useful for you to. Learn a little about that in order to be able to communicate with people who have different points of view than you do. Uh, so that's it. Um, I'll talk to you guys later. Uh, actually talk to you guys pretty soon. So stay tuned.